Good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining me and my good friend, Kimberly Jolivet Williams. Hey, everybody. Hey. Happy Friday Eve, right? That's right. And Happy New Year. We yes. haven't seen our friends since last year. Yes. Happy yeah. New Year, everybody. New Year, new beginnings. I, I got my, my motto is a better me in 2023. So <laughs> I love that. Can I borrow that? Yes. I love that. <laughs> so 2023, I really wanted to dedicate some time to the guidelines. Now, those of you that know me are probably tired of me saying the guidelines, right? And I get that. I actually, I tell my students um, in all my classes, please do not start a drinking game about how many times Christine says guidelines because you will not last 10 minutes. <laughs> that would be um, a bad deal. Absolutely. And I got to tell you that, um, you know, whether you are in risk adjustment, fee for service, whether you work in uh, a hospital setting, whether you work um, for the CDC, Wherever it is that you are are working and contributing, um, remember that ICD-10 isn't going away. We mm -hmm. use ICD-10 nationally, right? So, um, and we also use ICD-10 internationally. You know, yeah. uh, Australia has a very similar coding model to ours, the ICD-10 AM Australian modification, right? Yes. And there's lots of countries around the world that also, you know, use ICD-10 to report chronic conditions, to report epidemics, pandemics, right? Lots of those things. And so, you know, our coding system is so very important. Another area that, it, that our coding system is important to us is in the billing arena. Mm -hmm. You know, I started a, a new class last night, um, for the CPB course. And I had the privilege of speaking to the Petersburg AAPC chapter as well. And the nice. topic of conversation was revenue cycle. And whenever I present revenue cycle, I always say, you know, out of our almost 80,000 codes now, mm -hmm. um, there are still many codes outside of chapter 21 that cannot be reported as a primary or a first listed code by its designation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, understanding sequencing, understanding tabular notes, understanding all of those concepts is really hard. So I wanted to take this time on uh, National Ginger Day. Uh, I have a son who is half ginger. Does that make sense? He, he, so his whole life he was blonde. Okay. And then when he became a man, his beard came in bright orange, ah. bright orange. So half ginger. Okay. <laughs> new term. I got it. <laughs> I'm going to coin it. It's my new term, half ginger. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So I, I asked you to come on the show today, Kimberly, because you have the same passion that I have for ICD-10 and the <laughs> guidelines. Those rules, yes. those regulatory advice that we get from the collaborating entities. You know, ICD-10, um, they have four organizations that make up that cooperating party. That's right. So the American Hospital Association, the yeah. American Health Infor Management Association, yeah. the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, and the National Center for Health Care Statistics. Yes, and we hear that big, long term, and I try to remind everybody, that's the term we know as a HEMA, right? Right. <laughs> and so, you know, there's a lot of these authoritative ref, um, regulatory agencies that work in tandem to provide mm -hmm. us with the guidelines for coding our clinical modifications. Definitely. So, you know, we have a, a little clinical modification there. So I really wanted to go through that. And rather than just be like, hey, section one, subsection, blah, blah, I mm -hmm. wanted to bring you on so we could talk a little bit about real-time coding. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 
I do want to put a little plug out there. If, uh, if any of you that are on, if you've liked and subscribed to my page, you did see that this week we dropped the first section of ICD-10 or the first subsection of ICD-10 where we talk about the conventions. And the video that we've got on YouTube is a very in-depth video. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for interpretation of each of the sections, that's going to be your place to go. So if you go to YouTube and you click on that, you're going to see um, that that link there. But what I wanted to do today is talk to you, Kimberly, and, you know, based on your background and what you do, if you could share with me some information about how ICD-10 works in your daily tasks. Well, you know, I tell everybody, if I just actually taught my class too last night, I had a CPC built class with AAPC that I taught. Love and one of the classes. things that I covered with uh, some of my students was um, I tell them, I, I used the example that you like to use. I actually stole your example and used it last night because uh, one of the girls was like, well, should I read the guidelines before I um, try to select my code and, and do my scenario? And I'm like, well, if you go to Ikea and you buy a desk and it's just you, are you going to read the instructions before you try to put that desk together? I would hope so, right? Because if you're mm -hmm. like me, if I don't, it might be a bad situation at the outcome. And so I just told her, you know, if you don't read those guidelines and you don't go through them, it's kind of like you're working blind because you don't know your rules. You don't know what the regulatories tell you, how it should be coded, what should not be coded, and what the even what the convention codes mean. Because, you know, with the parentheses and the brackets, if you don't understand mm -hmm. what they mean and how to use them, it's kind of like you're working blind. That's so true. And and another good bit of advice that I, I like to share with people is, just like you said, the guidelines, once you start to read them, they really look like that furniture assembly instruction. <laughs> like you start looking at it and go, that's not even an English word, right? <laughs> yeah. And not to mention that uh, when my grandson first got here, we spent a lot of time together and I read the guidelines to him. Homeboy went out. He was sleeping within 30 seconds. I didn't even get through the first subsection of section, uh, the first section of ICD-10 guidelines. He was out cold, right? I'm going to have to try that with Sage. You should. Yeah, it's time for bed. Let, let, let me read you these guidelines. But my recommendation is you got to read them three times. Yes. The first time you read them, it's furniture instructions. You're kind of walking through like, I have no idea what I just read. The second time you read those guidelines, and maybe you want to wait a day. Maybe you want to read the guidelines the first time um, in the morning with a cup of coffee, the second time in the evening with a glass of wine, <laughs> and maybe a third time on a different day. That's when the light bulb comes on, friends. Mm -hmm. I promise. That yes. third time that you dedicate yourself to reading the guidelines and, and whether you read all four sections or you focus on section one and the three subsections, which in my opinion are the most important part of the guidelines, that's where you're definitely going to find the answers to the questions that you continue to have about who comes first, what can I code here? What happens when the doctor doesn't give me enough information? What do I default? All of those are answered mm -hmm. in the guidelines, but not the first time you read mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And I definitely tell them. And for me, I, I tell them, read them three times. And when you think you know, go ahead and read them again. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like to tell my students, too, when you, especially when you get, um, and I may be jumping ahead, but when you get more into the chapter specific guidelines, which I know you're going to cover later, um, you should work those simultaneously as you're going through your textbook and with each chapter, because mm -hmm. I think it has more relevance and the light bulb will come on quicker because you're working the same content that the guidelines is covering in those chapters. And you would hope that, you know, the repetition and the constant uh, looking at them will bring on the retention that you need to be able to at least, like I tell them, you don't have to memorize them, but right. like, you have that nugget so that when you see it, you know, oh, HIV, I think there's a guideline about that. Let me go and associate that with this scenario to make sure I code it correctly. 
that 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 is absolutely on the money my friend on the money and you know the other thing i'm going to recommend to you is every year when the new guidelines come out that's the best time of the year to read them mm -hmm. so um, every year especially last year not the 2023 mm -hmm. but the 2022 guideline they opened up so many options for coders we can look within the medical record to see if another provider has documented the BMI, the stage of the pressure ulcer. Like that was phenomenal information for coders. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had another uh, piece to my my armor as a coder. Right, I was given yeah. more more um, respecting my knowledge, giving me more that I could collect that specific code there. Mm -hmm. And I think that was also good um, because it helped as a support and an encouraging uh, mechanism for the providers and the clinicians to feel that they can be confident in us and that mm -hmm. um, we, when we give them information and we go and we select information and we share it with them, I think them putting that in the guidelines, let them know, hey, these people have been trained. They've been validated. They are certified. So you can be confident in what they're telling you. So that was like a push, I think, for us as well. I was ecstatic uh, when I saw it too. There, there are a few things in section one, subsection A, that I want to kind of cover. Um, I call this the dry section. <laughs> Thanks for introducing the guidelines with the dry section. <laughs> Um, and that's their conventions. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I first got started, well, I thought conventions were like, we were going to have a list of opportunities to go places <laughs> to a physical convention. Okay, so that right? is the convention, right? Headed to New Orleans. <laughs> that's right. Let's go. However, <laughs> I very quickly realized that it was not going to be a list of fun things to do while you're at Disney. Um, it was yeah. actually going to be some of the how we use our ICD-10 book in order to find codes, um, in order to sequence those codes, uh, a lot of that basic, basic knowledge we need. So, for example, um, in section IA2, where they talk about the structure of an ICD-10 code, you know, um, did you realize that ICD-10 codes are kind of like a nomenclature, that <laughs> each one of those spots has an, a designated mm -hmm. meaning to it? So the fifth, the, excuse me, the fourth spot is usually the site. So those first three are going to take you to the right ballpark. But that fourth site, let me see if I use this correctly. My friend Terry Fletcher is going to be so proud of me. That fourth character is like first base in the ballpark. I hope I'm doing this right. She'll be so disappointed. Um, <laughs> that sure first give you a spot, right. And it talks to us about the site. So the mm -hmm. ballpark might be um, an injury to our lower extremity. And that's going to be your first three characters. Mm -hmm. That fourth says the foot. The fifth gives us more severity it's a sprain mm -hmm. of the foot yeah. and the sixth character gives us detailed it's a sprain of the right foot yeah. and then that seventh character tells us are we in the active stage of the sprain mm -hmm. or are we in the healing stage of the sprain or is this a new condition related to an old sprain right yes. so yes. that's that's it that's what they're telling us that's what they're letting us know. Each spot has its own meaning, right? Yes, and then which they go is very through. much, very much an eye opener for me too when I started to dig deep and learn that. Because you know, um, a lot of times, especially I know for me, I started in the industry before I was certified. So I kind of, you know, how you learn on the job, right? You just kind of go through the motions, and they tell you this is the book, this is how you look it up, this is the code, but you don't get into the what I call the dirty details of it all until you get, you know, more advanced and you want to dig and you want to learn, especially if you're going to educate. And so mm -hmm. uh, those different positions um, of how, when you look at a code, what each one was assigned to, um, it really was an eye opener for me as well. 
Oh, absolutely. Um, Lexi, can you post Betty's comment there? I love that. I tell my clients to go to the codes that are covered in the guidelines and write the specific guideline that applies mm -hmm. next to the code or the category to prompt them to look at the guidelines to assign a code. Um, yes. I couldn't have said it better. So I had That's to right. show the friends what you were talking about there. Yes, Absolutely. Excellent, excellent now, a couple, Betty. A couple mm -hmm. of things about that. So Kimberly, you and I know that ICD-10 can be published by any publisher. That's right. Several. Same books. content, mm -hmm. but it's open, open to anybody. There's no proprietary. Nobody, no one mm -hmm. entity owns it like CPT. Yes. Yes, and um, I tell them, I, I say it, it looks different, but it should be weighed the same. Uh, that's one thing I tell my students. I'm like, from one, from AAPC to Optum to Decision Health, they all have their little spin and how they organize it and their color coding and all that. But I tell them at the core of the content, it all should be equal. <clears throat> and some of the publishers they actually will put maybe a little eyeball next to the root that requires a guideline. But, you know, what Betty was saying is we don't always get that identification mm -hmm. either at the root of the code or at the code. That's and so right. I like that advice that she's giving there. Oh, yes, definitely. I think, yeah, and, and I have heard that before and I've shared that before too. I tell them, just write you a little nugget, you know, OGCR, be whatever next to the code. So then when you go to look it up, you're not searching, not rambling, you know exactly where to go. Even if you know the page number if on your guidelines, you want to put G7, G8, put that right. next to the code so you can know where to go. That's a guide for you, especially when you're testing, because things like that, that can be such a time eater, you know, and you don't want to have that time eater when you're taking your certification test. Every minute oh. counts. Even when you're doing production coding, you exactly. know, it's, yes. there's so yeah. many reasons why that's such a great idea. Yes. Um, now, I, 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 I can feel it coming already. Well, we use encoders. Okay, that's great. Wow. But your encoder, you know, it, it may not direct you or if it directs you, you may not see it that mm -hmm. there is a guideline attached to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you do use an encoder, and I love encoders, don't get oh, me wrong. Yeah. I have my physical book here in front of me, but I have my encoder open all the time. Yes. Um, I, I remember the nuggets, like Kimberly was saying, when you read it over and over again, you retain mm -hmm. just that, that outline mm -hmm. of what's in the guidelines. And that way I can always go to my guidelines when I'm coding Mm -hmm. Just to assure that that's what we do, right? That's right. So yep. use your encoder, keep your nuggets of wisdom. That's and right. like Kimberly said, uh, HIV or even better, sepsis. Mm -hmm. Nobody should yeah. ever code sepsis without looking at the guidelines. <laughs> I right? know, Let's right? Be honest, friends, right? Yes. And because yeah. Betty is right too, because even like a code like sepsis, that's a great one to bring up. When mm -hmm. you go to the guidelines, they help you. Because they mm -hmm. give you the codes and they tell you the sequencing and what to look for. And so, again, if you just keep that nugget, when you go to it, when you get your documentation, you should be able to easily go through it. Now, of course, it's going to take time. Like mm -hmm. Christine said, you won't get it the first time you read them, right? It comes with your experience and your time. But over time, if you keep that same consistency, then you'll see you'll get stronger at ICD-10 and you'll be more confident and you'll have that reassurance. And I'm like you, I love the encoders, but I love my tangible books because with my encoders, I don't always remember to put those notes electronically. But when I have my tangible books, I can take my pen and I can make my notes and I can draw whatever diagrams I need and it will always be in that tangible book. I, I don't have to worry about searching it out through an encoder. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I was looking for a note here, uh, a comment that someone made. Natasha. Natasha said, hey, we Natasha. can pull up Natasha. I know. I love it. Oh, yeah. I got to meet Natasha. She oh, is awesome. Yes, that's right. Oh my God. I and her daughter, so Zena. Jelly. Hey, Zena. How are you? Um, so Natasha I so says, jelly. I spend time transferring my notes from each year's books and it really helps me reread and understand the guidelines. So a lot of us, a lot of us old school, right? 
We got our notes in our books. I uh, Again, just another, if you are on the YouTube channel, we are going through each one of the chapters and we are writing notes and we're highlighting. Um, I don't have a fancy system like the certification um, organization, the CCO. Dot, what ha oh, I forgot their yeah. website. I'm totally blowing yeah. this, but we'll put it in the CCO. link there. CCO.us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, CCO.us. Yeah. They have a wonderful system. Very I have nice. something that is very rude in comparison. <laughs> um, it's just very, very, but it works for me. Yeah. And I, I'm a firm believer that you should surround yourself with education, whether it's CCO.us or you're looking at Sterling Global's YouTube channel or right. you have an outside resource that you want to bring in. Um, I, I don't believe in too much information. That's right. And, right? It, and it also, I learn differently. So sometimes I can't learn it from a particular uh, source. I have to go to another source because everybody teach differently and we're all unique. So that's another reason I'm always seeking out different education and different ways to review, even if it's the same thing. So I'll go out there and I'll watch your uh, conventions, YouTube, and then I'll go out there and I'll watch CCO. And then I'll go out there mm -hmm. and I'll watch Terry Fletcher and different people, <sighs> Betty Hobie, you know, and, and because you, different people teach and they explain differently and they have different experiences. So right. the examples that different people give when they put the education out there, especially with ICD-10, because of their experiences, sometimes that's all you need is a different experience to make that flashlight or that, that light bulb go off in your head, right? So mm -hmm. that's, I love it too. I, I do a lot of cross education with a lot of different uh, colleagues that I network with. Agreed. All right. Here's the million dollar question. <laughs> excludes one and excludes two. Oh, Lord. How do you understand those? Oh, you know, I tell everybody in my mind, I have excludes one mean no, don't do it. You can't put them together. Stop. Do not go. Excludes two is okay. Let's look at it. It's optional. We might be able to do it. Let's go check our documentation and see. But I'm like you. I When I think excludes one, excludes two, even when I throw in includes, I'm like, oh my God pause let me wrap my mind around all this this could be overwhelming <laughs> and i tell my students too i'm like give yourself some grace you're not gonna get it overnight but you can get it and you will get it but yeah that whole excludes one excludes mm -hmm. two throwing in includes yeah it could be a bit much i i like to talk i like to say excludes is a either or you either acquired the condition because mm -hmm. you ate about you know you ate the wrong thing you didn't exercise right you you or you acquired it right <laughs> let's be honest sometimes you earn that yes you do. I but, have, like i will be a witness i have earned it <laughs> that's right so you've either earned it or yeah. you were born with it that's right you can't be born with it and then earn it so there's that conflict mm -hmm. and i look at my excludes one like that Gotcha. Were you born with it or did you earn it? Because mm -hmm. you can't do both, mm -hmm. right? Think about the type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. That's right. You can't either your pancreas doesn't work yeah. or your pancreas is tired. Yeah. Well, what yeah. is it? Is it mm -hmm. tired or does it not work, that's right? right? So that's where I see those conflicts gotcha. and that's what exclude 1 means to me. Gotcha. Um, excludes 2, I look at it like these two things could happen at the same time mm -hmm. you could have um a, a chronic um uh, pharyngitis and then you know some little kid comes over for christmas and they got that little like snotty nose and you're like Both oh it's so cute give me a hug and Both then you have kids. acute pharyngitis mm -hmm. it's an exacerbation on a new interaction it's acute there well, we don't have that combo code. We got a lot of combo codes. I love combo mm, codes. Yes. But when we don't have a combo code, excludes two in my eyes just means when both of these conditions are present, then we report both of those codes. Yes. And and I kind of look at it that excludes <laughs> two is like um, a tip almost. Like, oh, 
by the way, they mm -hmm. could also have these. So double check. Yeah. Um, and I do love it too, because um, it's funny you said tip, because I love that when they give you the information, they also give you the code set. So mm -hmm. when you see that verbiage in your documentation and you go down on that excludes two, you'll see right underneath there, they give you the different uh, code sets. So you can go and go further investigate by mm -hmm. starting with that, that leading initial code set that they give you to see if your documentation support you adding an additional code. Yep. I couldn't agree more. Another thing in the conventions that's so important is we get the explanation of when to use and, when to use with, when to code first, meaning yes. that we need to make sure that's the first code and use additional codes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. second, third, fourth, fifth that's code, right. right? Yep, our code also. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Haley just posted a great comment. Yes. And I've seen this recently. I'm working uh, with a client on a denial management program uh -huh. and they are being hounded for those excludes information, code selections. Wow. Remember I told you that out of the almost 80,000 codes <clears throat> outside of chapter 21, there are still tons of codes that cannot be primary or first listed codes mm -hmm. for conditions got to go back to those conventions and see yes. that code first. Yes. Awesome, Haley. Yes. Thanks for hey, sharing Haley. that. I like Haley too. <laughs> All our friends are here. So fun. Yes. I know. I know. And so thankful that you guys are posting your comments there mm -hmm. because it's important. Um, another perspective is Betty's perspective excludes one. Never, 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 never. So uh, any of you Taylor Swift fans out there, never, <laughs> never, never, never together. Oh hey, God, that was so cheesy. That's a good one. That's someone's hey, going to say that to me. Hey, You're going to be I like, "Oh, the T S, the T S lady." No, no, no. <laughs> it's like whatever you need to make you retain. I say, do it. If Taylor works, let's have her. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. So that's why the conventions, as as dull and as boring as they are, they're pretty powerful. Yeah, they matter. Because if we're to... not sequencing right, mm -hmm. or we're not following those excludes, again, what a horrible title, excludes one and excludes two. Like, I wish somebody would have called me first and been like, Christine, <laughs> is there a better way to do this? But, you know, none of those four organizations reached out and was like, you know, so so it is Don't what it is. Bad. They didn't I, reach I out try. to me either, my friend. They, they See, didn't ask me either, my friend. <laughs> you and I, we would have absolutely come up with something different to report that. But since we're stuck with it, we've we've got to embrace it, right? They, they didn't want my Kimberlyism. <laughs> I definitely would have shared it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So um you know, I'm so, so grateful that you came on today to talk to me about um, the first section, subsection A, oh, the conventions. Yes. Boy, I do wish it was a convention. I wish it was out in <laughs> Dallas. I'd come visit with you. Oh, would, I would love it so much. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yes. I love and going I, to the conventions and meeting up with all my friends. Okay. Yes. And I wanted to make sure people knew, and I know you share it when you did your YouTube, yeah. but I want to tell them before we uh, jump off, I know we're wrapping yeah. up, uh, but make sure you all know you can print the guidelines from the CMS and the CDC website. I like those better just for learning because the font is bigger. Okay. Ooh, yeah. And you have more margin to make notes, you know, in the front of our book is so tight. I write kind of big. And so I like to do that and I, I like to make sure everybody know you can do it. Now, you can only use it on an on-site exam. You can't mm -hmm. use it online, but for your own personal development, it is a good tool, um, whether you're doing online or in-person exams. I like it as a personal development. And then just like today, I can print them out. I can print out just a section. I did that today, just print out this section. And then I can focus on just that one section because I have a hard time trying to put all those 118 pages in one little setting. Mm -hmm. I have to break it up. 
So that's just my Kimberlyism tip for some. I love it, Kimberly. And, and I'll take it one step further. Those of you that are using an encoder, maybe print out those guidelines at the beginning of uh, October 1st when they become effective. Read through them again add your notes to them and, and have them as your working resource Absolutely. on your desk. Absolutely. So again, when you come up with those areas, hypertension, when we need that seventh character, mm -hmm. when we're talking about uh, malfunctions of insulin pumps, yes, that you're, like you said. Mm -hmm. right, your resource is right there right. and you have it for the whole year. Yeah. And I actually take mine to a Staples or Office Max, and they will spiral them for you. So I print them out. Yes, girl. I print oh. them, and I, I don't think it costs $10. It's around $10. Um, wow. I can print them at home, or I can email them to them and have them print it double-sided, ask them yes. to spiral it, put me a clear cover on it, and I keep it on my desk. And that way, I, my guidelines are right there at hand's reach. So when I need them, because you know I, I am not always actively coding anymore. I'm not an abstract production coder anymore. I'm working in compliance. So I need that refresher right at my fingertips. So when I have things that I need to look up, so I, that's what I do. And I love it. I've been doing it for a few years. Someone gave me that tip a mm -hmm. few years back and I've been doing it. And when I was teaching on site, I would print them up for my students and I would give them to them. But now, you know, everything's remote now, our teaching. But yeah, that's that's a good resource. That's that's exactly what Coding with Christine Hall is about. It's about your recommendations, Betty's recommendations, Lady's recommendations, mm -hmm. Haley's recommendations. Yes. Um, we couldn't do this with without you all. Mm -hmm. So I, I thank you. And you. We couldn't do it without you. <laughs> I, it, 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 it takes all of us. You know, I, yes. I, I piggyback on your saying what you say. We may not know it all, just us, but together. Right. right? Together. We can know. It. know a whole lot more. That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So thank you so much, Kimberly, for joining me today. I can't believe it's over already. I know, um, right? we could we'll be back in that. two weeks where we're going to dive into the general coding. So that subsection B, general coding guidance there, which is probably my favorite as a coder. Mm -hmm. um, but I won't spoil it. I'll, I'll see you in two weeks and we'll have okay. that chat there. I'll but thank you forward. so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Happy it New was Year, my, my friend. honor. My honor to serve everybody today. Yes. <laughs> All right. Have a happy New Year and a wonderful time. And we'll see you in two weeks. Yes. Have a thriving Thursday, everybody. Thanks for watching.